Hey guys, welcome back to the Trauma Train. I think it's been a year, I can't remember, but on this channel we broke down To Your Eternity, season one. Every single episode, there was pain, we were chatting, I remember us being very chatty. But we are here again, nights are getting colder, the dark things are lurking around, and we are back talking about one of the most traumatic animes that hit last year. But we're back to see if this anime can get any brighter, if this anime continues to keep pulling all the punches. This week's episode, I was right to trust my instincts and I'm glad that I did because some people just don't change. Before we get going, make sure you guys are subscribed. I am also recording in the middle of a storm, so I really hope this storm cannot be picked up. We've had lightning, we've had thunder. My cat has sung the song of her people because she hates storms. We're going to have the midway review. In the midway review, we're going to crown my top three OPs, EDs and current standards anime it may be weird to put to your eternity onto that list but we're gonna have to see what these next two episodes do quite sad because it starts a little bit later it's also got a weird amount of episodes it's got 20 episodes it means it's gonna be here till next year so that's quite cool to know but it has started quite late so whether it's gonna be on the mid row of you who knows but it definitely will hopefully work its way up and be in time for the end or season review but thank you guys for tuning in once again you'll have to let me know if you're back for round two did you sit through our breakdowns last season hopefully you're gonna have fun this season as well a lot of time has changed and hopefully these videos are gonna be just as fun as they were last without further ado i want to come back i want to come back to the world of the pain pain train is now departing the station all aboard get your butts into those seats it's time to go onwards to the fushi saga we go I wasn't expecting the same OP. It's weird because it did give me those nostalgia pangs. I think that may have been their choice because they could have chosen a different song, anything. They've chosen a different ED, but their open is the same. It's just aged up. And what I've noticed with especially what we've seen so far, the first season was very primitive. The second season feels very medieval. There's a lot more sword spears. There's a lot more armor going around. It does feel like the world is starting to age up with Fushi. And of course, there's been a 40 year jump. What we do get to see in our first little dive into the world, the world seems to be actually fighting the fake boobs. And I'm going to keep calling them fake boobs because they're called knockers. And in the UK, knockers is just slang. And I can't unhear and unsee what I'm seeing in my brain. The humans actively combating them. Whether it's because they don't really have a choice and they've learned to fight these threats. We are told that only six people technically die in the initial attack we see in the start. Which is definitely a improvement upon thousands of people losing their lives. The humans are starting to evolve with or without Fushi being there. Fushi, well, he's been sitting on Fushi's paradise. All he needs right now is a little football called Wilson sitting by his side. The voice actor for Fushi is, of course, Patrick from Shadow's House. It was his first role and I'm so happy that he's finally fully vocal. He's now talking to us. It's very strange hearing him. 40 years is a long time and all he's really had to keep in company is Kenjiro Suda. What a lucky person. I am so jealous. I have missed Kenjiro Suda. You know he's my favourite voice actor. The only thing I really had him in last season was Lucifer and the Snooze Fest Hammer, which was the most boringest thing on the planet, and I dropped it. And I'm sad about that because Kenjiro Suda was there. But he's back. He's back as our narrator and he's got a bit more of a vocal role this week. He's been perhaps the grounding force to keeping Fushi somewhat sane. He's become that conversationalist. He's been talking to Fushi quite freely. They've been conversing quite a lot as well. He's keeping track of time, telling him what time it is. I think Kenjiro Suda has just turned into an alarm clock or Siri. And I am so happy if we can have a Siri version that is just Kenjiro Suda telling me what time it is. I am down with that. Strange to see Fushi back and he's aged up quite a bit. He's got stubble and everything. Just hanging loose on an island, really eating knockers, which is such a weird thing to be doing. He's still very immature. He's still impatient. We see him throwing a bit of a strop. Told about an in-joke between the two about the sea creatures where he tells him to go and play with the sea creatures like he did. Fushi says that it was so horrific. He put him off eating fish what we can roughly deduce is he spent time as a crab and he was absolutely adorable and now i really want this plushie on my table the narrator got so pissed because he was basically hiding from everything he decides to throw him in the sea as punishment which is hilarious to see him just toss him in there and eventually he comes back cool way of doing a flashback showing us the memory dive of fushi as he was a crustacean even as a crustacean he found a fish that he really liked he was chilling out with it's the idea that fushi is lonely and and even on his own, even as a crustacean, he got lonely. Whether it was through abandonment or death, 
he ends up always just feeling something's missing, which even now is the case that Fushi is kind of lonely and we even hear the narrator ask, are you lonely? Obviously Fushi right now is hiding away. But he doesn't want to deal with the fact that people die and it's sad and it's something that he doesn't really want to come to terms with. He doesn't want to see people he loved die. That is going to be the painful message of To Your Eternity that everybody does sadly come to an end. It's just you have to make the most of what time is given. It did also remind me a little bit of the indie games where you start really tiny like a microbe and you eat your way up until get you get bigger and bigger until you can eat the earth. He was getting bigger and bigger eating different fish. It's still really weird seeing Fushi just chilling out eating the knockers. I can't imagine that's full of nutrition. I can't imagine that's doing any favours for him. But this has been Fushi's island life for the past 40 years. The anime decided to kick us ahead because nothing really happened during those 40 years. You don't have to sit through everything. It's given us a quick gloss up on what happened. Literally as soon as Fushi decides it's time to leave, it's time to go save people because he learns that people are dying on, on shore instead because the knockers are getting quite bored of being cooked up and eaten by Fushi and not getting anything from him. It's time for our plot device to come forward. It's Hayase's daughter and this is a big memory jolt for me when I remembered it, the piece of crap that killed March and Perona and tried to do something very, very bad to Fushi. So bad that I'm looking at that daughter wondering who her dad is. Hisame, I think is her name. I know she's a child and I think Fushi is probably more mature than I am, but I just don't trust anybody. I didn't trust her immediately and what happens later down the line just proved that I had a reason not to trust her. Fushi may be a bit nicer than me. There's this reincarnation business going on and Hisame coldly even calls the child murder appropriate. That boiled my blood, that upset me and I was like, I know you're being brainwashed, I know you're dealing with these ideas being passed on from the people around you, so you're really just a product of your environment. But yeah, hashtag fuck how I say is back, I'm sorry guys, do you remember my hashtag, it's back, her evil continuing even after she has apparently died now, I'm um, allegedly died. But she has implanted a knocker into her own child's arm. Are these the guardians or are they a death squad? Because I would have that kid sleeping far, far away as possible from me. Even with all this coming to light, I just couldn't bring myself to believe that this person was different from the crimes, completely separate type situation going on. I don't know, something just didn't allow me to go, okay, she's a new character, I'll just chill with it right now. But we do get to learn via this moment about the idea of fey or energy. And this is all coming out of this reincarnation idea. Hayase is living within Hisame. And I actually believe it because she recognises a few characters like Tonari. And I don't think those two would have crossed paths at all because she was nine. Unless Hayase has drawn her some really nice artwork. Don't think that's the case. I think she is inside her. Irritating to me because it's like, can you just cut that lump out? Can we just cut the lump? Because you might actually be a savable character. That thing in your arm definitely her. She became like a parasite or something and she's locked herself inside this child, which is so sad because I think without this influence by Hayase, Hisame probably would just be another character who really does want to learn about the weather world and I could believe her. We get a chance to see how much our boy has grown and I am very proud of him because Fushi is able to see that it's not right to hate a nine-year-old, somebody he's actually never really met before but he does say I feel uncomfortable. I feel uncomfortable because of what happened but I know there's no point hating somebody who has no seemingly no untoward towards me, no ill thought towards me. I'm going to keep saying allegedly because of what happens at the end anyway but I didn't fully trust her so that probably means I'm the bad person. <laughs> Sorry Fushi. You've grown up more than I have. I was asking these big questions like, what is a guardian? What is their actual role? What are they planning to do? What was this big plot that ISA was clearly planning before she even died to implanting herself within the kid's arm? She's clearly coming back at some point. She's clearly not done with Fushi. Told by Tonnery, technically they are the fan club. Like she's trying to gloss it over or, because at that point he didn't know it was her. I think she's saying it with the knowledge that the fan club are technically listening in and she's not trying to give away any of her cards just yet. So I don't think we can fully take it grain for grain, but she's trying to say that they are a fan club and they're trying to control you, which is probably all we really need to know is that they're not good news. They're trying to keep Fushi, one in for themselves. And there's an entire nation who are apparently following them because they want Fushi. And is it also a weird one to think that these guys idolise somebody they haven't seen in 40 years and obviously he's immortal they know he's not dead he could have stayed hidden for the rest of their lives however very refreshing to hear Fushi talking freely I really enjoy it however it does sadly get cut short 
But it's also something that we were picking up on all the way through season one. Fushi needed that mother figure. He always had somebody to, to talk for him, able to push the plot forward. As us as an audience, we'd need somebody to talk to us. It would have been difficult for them to have a load of episode ones over and over again where nobody actually talks. I think it would have been very hard to put it off. So we've had people like March who acted like a mother who are able to act as a bridge to us, the audience, to learning about Fushi. Now, we don't need anybody anymore. Fushi can actually talk to us, but it's possible he may become a parental force for Hisame if things are sorted out. That could be a result of this season. If cards play in a certain direction, I do worry that Hisame is just going to be Hayase Mark II. This is going to be our villain for this season. But the reason why my trust when it comes to To Your Eternity is never ever going to be full, why I can never trust anybody, is because of stuff like this. Everybody getting knocked out by poison. And does that remind you of the first time we met Hayase? Well, yeah, it does because it is Hayase. I can't separate the two because Hisame wasn't even there and she's pulling off stunts that Hayase pulled off. My shocked face, guys. This is my shocked face. <laughs> no shock face right now. I'm not shocked. It's a not a shocked face. I'm... Not shocked that they're trying to catch Fushi again. They're trying to keep him for themselves and probably do very bad things to him again. Almost can't blame Fushi for wanting to live on an island in silence away from everybody. No drama, nothing. Hashtag fuck Hayase. Cool reveal at the end that it's Tonnery. I did think she looked somewhat familiar. This is Tonnery like in the age of 50, right? Because she must have been 17, 16-ish in season one. And I, I still recognised her. It was the eyes. It was obviously the use of the bow as well that I recognised. It's good to see that she got off that island, obviously, in the end. And she's now maybe had a fun life. We'll have to catch up with her next episode. But it's nice because I think she's there to save Fushi. Please save Fushi. Give me some hope that this isn't going to be a complete copy of last season where Fushi spent a lot of time in captivity. I want Fushi to spend most of season two a free guy. I would love that. The ED is absolutely adorable. We do have a new ED. It's cute. All of our characters are just chilling out. What I'm noticing too in the OP and in the ED, growth is a key feature. We're looking at trees growing. Everything is always growing around us and the world is completely spinning onwards. Lots of nighttime shots, lots of stars, but all of these characters remain ageless because through Fushi, they will never age. They will never cease to get older and be forgotten. Fushi is keeping their memories alive. He is preserving humanity, which is the actual role he's been given by the narrator. I am so happy we are back with this one. It's been a nice, relatively painless start, so that's all good for me. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You'll have to wave at me in the comments if you are back after a break and you have found me again for season two. Thank you guys so much. I really can't wait to discover what happens to Fushi this time? Who are our bad people? Who are our good people? What new friends is he going to make? What new forms is he going to take? Who's going to die? Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.